let's learn about inheritance and polymorphism. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about inheritance and polymorphism. Now, those are two very big terms, but the concepts behind them are actually fairly straightforward. So no worries at all. I'm sure that we will manage. So let's imagine the following. Right now we have our dog class and now all of a sudden we think of ourselves, hey, you know what, I actually want a cat class as well because let's be honest, we don't want like 50% of the population to be left out. So we'll create a new cat class as well. And now all of a sudden we feel like, I mean, the cat is like, it's also going to have a picture and a name and an age. So we might be like, well, I mean, let's just copy this over here and... And we're going to be like, well, I mean, the cat is going to have, you know, stuff like this as well, like, well, getting the age. And you soon will realize that that's a lot of duplicate code, right? I mean, just this alone, where both of the classes, even though they're well, more or less separate, they have the same fields. You can say, well, that doesn't make any sense. So for that, what we can use is inheritance. So we can make sort of a class, which might be called animal, for example, which both the cat and the dog inherit from. And that would be inheritance in that case. And when you inherit from a class, you inherit both the fields as well as some of the methods. So that's actually pretty cool. So let's do that. In, the, in our package, we're just going to create the animal class like this. And then what we'll do is we'll actually take out all of the fields here. And we're going to put this in the animal class. And what we're also going to do is we're just going to delete those fields here as well. Done. Now, we're going to get a lot of errors along the way. But as soon as we're done, I'm like, it's going to be fine. And then we're going to do the following. We're going to, after the dog, we're going to write extends and then animal. Now you will see that the picture and name, the fields, I can actually still access. That's pretty cool. But why can't I access the H? Well, this is very interesting because private fields or private methods can actually only be accessed in the actual class. Like this, this being private means that it cannot be accessed outside of this class. Protected means... It can be accessed in the same package or in the well classes that extend from this, so from that inherit from this. So we might want to change this to protected, and all of a sudden everything in the dog here still works totally fine. Let's actually delete some of those comments here, and this is now really cool. So that's actually pretty nice. And um, what uh, what are we gonna do now? Well, let's first of all also say the cat extends the animal class as well, right? And at this point nothing happens. But of course, there's going to be a little bit of an issue because here, let's say the constructor here basically does what we've done before. But, well, we would have the same constructor in the cat as well. And it's like, well, can't we just have that constructor here as well in the animal class? Yes, of course. So right click and then we're going to say actually generate a constructor, making sure that we select all of those and say, OK. And now we're going to start to come into some issues because now you can see that because I'm creating a dog, I also have to create an animal, right? Because a dog is an animal and I somehow have to call this constructor in the subclasses. So what I can do is instead of assigning those individually, I can just say super and then put all of the stuff in here. So you can see that it actually already is smart enough to figure out that I can just put all of the different parameters in here and that's going to be fine. And we're going to basically delete the default constructor, which is not now no longer available. And what will happen is that if you have in your sort of super class a constructor and you inherit this super class here, for example, so cat extends animal, then you can see you will get an error here and then you will hover over this and you can see there's no default constructor available in animal. Meaning that because there's no default constructor here where you don't have to pass anything in, you have to somehow call this super. And you can see create constructor matching super is sort of the... Well, very easy fix that you can do. You can just click this and it will generate an, a, a constructor here automatically for you. And that's pretty much all that you need to do to do this. And the great thing is that now, okay, now the fields sort of share this, right? Because it's like, okay, a, both a dog and a cat have, you know, a picture, a name and an age. That's pretty cool. But what about like stuff like the birthday? Well, I mean, the birthday is like not something special to the dog. This can also be done in the actual like animal class okay fair enough and this also still works so if i were to say here benji dot uh, birthday for example i can still call this even though that the birthday you can see public this is in animal actually right so this was defined here but i can still call it on a dog because the dog is still an animal that's sort of the inheritance idea 
What doesn't make any sense would be something like get age in human years. That doesn't make any sense to put that in the animal because that's a very specific thing. It even takes the dog to human year multiplier. So we wouldn't put that out. But what about the wolf, for example? Well, the wolf, I mean, you could imagine maybe doing something like, well, I mean, any, every animal is going to make a sound, right? So we might be able to say something like public, avoid, and then make sound. And then just say something like system out print line, this dot name, and then just made a made a sound. Now, this is going to be sort of an issue because, well, I mean, the dog should woof and the cat should meow, right? Well, I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first of all, you know, start to go with this. And then I believe that the getter can be, you know, gone as well. And then here we have it. So we have the a static method, which outputs a dog. Fair enough. We have this particular method, get age in human years for the dog. And the cat literally just has the constructor in it. But the cat also has access to the make sound method, the birthday method, and all of the fields. So now what we can do is we can, for example, say the following. We can say make a new cat called Whiskers, let's say. Whiskers is a new cat with the whiskers.png as the picture and then Whiskers as the name. And then let's just say four or something like that. And what we can do is let's say, for example, Benji.make sound. And then we can say whiskers dot make sound as well. Now, this is going to be a little lackluster because, of course, they're both going to be just like, hey, Benji just made a sound and whiskers just made a sound. So that's kind of weird, right? Well, now we get into a very cool thing which inheritance allows us to do, and that is override methods. So here, this those two are public methods, and I'm like, okay, an animal makes a sound. That's fi fair enough. But every animal I actually have might make a different sound. So what I can do, I can go in here and I can either type, start to type an override and then you can see, I see all of the things that I am able to override or I can just start to type in the actual method and then it's also going to be sort of recommended or suggested for me. And I can then press the tab key and what will happen is it will add this annotation here. This is actually not necessary. However, it is very valuable to see on a glance, hey, this method actually has been overridden by some of these by this subclass from some of its superclasses. So that's actually very important to have this just so that it's a little bit easier to read. And instead of calling the super make sound class or method rather, what I can just say is I can just say, well, you know, I'm just going to say something like system out print line and I'm going to say this dot name and then I'm going to say just woofed. Oh, does that work? Of course. And then we're going to copy this actually. So this is one of those moments where, of course, there might be other methods or other ways that we could do this that makes it a little bit more robust where we wouldn't have to copy this over. But to illustrate this example here, we're just going to copy this over and I'm going to say this name meowed for the make sound. And then all of a sudden, we've not changed anything in here. We've only changed the cat and the dog class. All of a sudden, what's going to happen? Benji just woofed. Whiskers just meowed. So that's the overriding of a method. Incredibly powerful in this sense. Because the, let's say, an animal is very abstract in the idea, right? What is an animal? Well, I mean, you can name a lot of animals, but they're all specific animals, right? And this is like the idea. So you have the ability to override methods, which is going to make it available for you to make something that's more particular or more, well, non-abstract, so to speak. And... And now the really interesting thing is, okay, fair enough, that's that's all fine. But this is inheritance. Okay, that's pretty cool. I have an animal, which has, you know, an animal class, which has some fields, and I can inherit those fields to other classes. Okay, fair enough. So number one, first thing I want to say, sort of after we're done with inheritance here, if there's some parts that are a little bit weird, not, not to worry at all, because this is something that's very much a hard thing to master and even a hard thing to understand, it's probably going to take you a little bit of figuring out on yourself as well. So you just have to just, um, you know, try out a bunch of stuff. Maybe it's a, make something like a, you know, a vehicle class. And then you make like a, a, like a truck class and then a car class. And then a vehicle, you know, both classes inherit from vehicle. And just, just try out a bunch of stuff. See if you can sort of figure it out. Because this, I don't think that even a 30 minute video or a 50 minute video is going to teach you like everything about inheritance because it's always it's always like you know if you hear you forget if you see you remember if you do you you actually know how to do it that's sort of the idea so think about this for inheritance polymorphism is a 
name for a concept that is absolutely incredibly easy to actually understand. So really, what it really is, is just that a particular object can take different forms. What does that mean? Well, a cat, as we've established before, and a dog are both animals. So what I can have is I can have a list of animal, for example, which I'm just going to call animals. And this is going to be a new array list. And then we're going to import a list pressing Alt and Enter to import the class here. So this is now a list of animals. Very important. This is an animal list. And I can just add, for example, Benji to it. Or I can just duplicate this Control D and then I can add Gracie to it. And then I can also add Whiskers to it. Okay, fair enough. That's that's totally fine. Now what I can do is I can say animals.get, for example, and then we're just going to get the one with um, the index 1. And as you can see, I have access to all of the methods that the animal has access to. So for example, you can see even though one is Gracie, which is a dog, I can't call the uh, get human year multiplier stuff. I can't do that. But I can do the make sound method. So this is now called on the animal, right? Because this is an animal. And you can be like, yeah, well, I mean, so it's going to say Gracie just made a sound. Actually, that's the cool thing. That's not what it's going to say. It's actually going to say Gracie just woofed. Because even though this is an animal, in the background, it actually is a dog. And I can even make this even stronger or, or starker. I can say animal, animal, right? And this is equal to a new dog called, I don't know, who knows, Jenny, right? Or rather, this would be Jenny.png. This is then Jenny. And this is then, let's say, 12. So now I've actually created a new animal. However, the actual like data type is a new dog. So that's pretty freaking crazy. So I can say animal dot make sound. And of course, what's going to happen is that Jenny just woofed instead of Jenny just made a sound. So that is a really, really crazy cool thing. That is basically what polymorphism is. It's basically a the ability of an object to take, you know, different forms. And this is sort of the, I wouldn't say main thing, but one of the things where this is used. So you just have a list of animals because if I want a list of animals, then, you know, the issue is that this is the cat and this is, these are dogs. So if I want all of them in a list, I have to have something that is similar among them. Because if I have a list of dog, I can't add whiskers to it. If I have a list of cats, I can't add Benji or Gracie to it. So that is really cool. And even though they are, they sort of act as animals or they, they look like animals, they actually have a more particular instantiation as their class. So that's pretty cool. Now, once again, also for polymorphism, if you didn't quite understand that, that's totally fine. Um, this and the next tutorial really are a little more, I don't want to say esoteric, but it's very hard to really get a very good grabs, uh, grasp of it or understanding and without trying a bunch of stuff. So no worries at all. If this was a little confusing, just try to at least uh, try out a bunch of stuff. That's number one. And number two, I also definitely advise you, if there's anything that you didn't understand, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them best of my ability. But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.